God will rather have mercy. Ha. Than sacrifice. But us as Christians, woo, we love this word. Sacrifice. <laughs> Especially when we're buying. My goodness, we're going to sacrifice today. But uh, our whole Christianity is about sacrificing unto God. We sacrifice ourselves unto Him. Our lives is a sacrifice. It's a living sacrifice unto Him. But the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees challenged Jesus. They thought evil in their hearts. Jesus knowing what they are thinking because they know that throughout the whole law, you cannot become free. You cannot attain to anything unless you pay and sacrifice something in order to receive. God does not own pick and pay. If you need some grace today, you can't go into God's pick and pay and... All right. How much, how much grace can I get for 50 bucks, Lord? All right. That's half a day's grace. All right, God. I want the full day's grace. It's 100 bucks. But in a sense, that's how we've been operating. We think that we need to sacrifice so much in order for God to see us and to be pleased with us. I mean, Jesus is not talking to the saved ones and to his children. He's talking to the Pharisees. He says, go and learn what this means. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. God wants mercy. So Luke 9, he says, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils. Just jump back to uh, Matthew 9. It says the men marveled because God had given such power unto men. Here Jesus comes. He calls his 12 disciples. And by the way, one of them was a devil. <sighs> Hallelujah. In the church. Yes. Walking with Jesus. If you find a devil in church, don't be so shocked. <laughs> and he gave them power and authority over all devils. Jesus gave who? Oh, power. All right. I want you to pay attention to this part. Jesus did something. There was an action. He gave them power over all devils and unclean spirits. Ha, he gave them power over all. Okay. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. So he gave them power over all authority and devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God Woo. and to heal the sick. That is good. And he said unto him, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves, nor scrip, neither bread, nor money, huh? neither two coats apiece, nor air time. All right? And whatsoever house you enter into, abide there, and thence depart. And whatsoever, whosoever will not receive you, when you go out of that city, shake off the dust from your feet for a testimony against them. So just to bring you guys some freedom, when you go out and you have like the fire within you to chase out something and to bring freedom to someone and to, to just give someone the good news and they do not accept it, it is not because you missed something. It's not because you don't have the power. It's because they are not willing to receive what you are about to give. And don't let that dust sit on you. Don't let that dust influence the power that has been given to you. Shake off the dust. If you find a devil in church, shake off the dust. If you have him talking in your ear, clap him back, shake off the dust. What is the dust? Dust is a dirty thing. Dust clings to you. And just to put it in the best way today, dust that we have today come forth in conversations. Because when you go into a conversation with someone and you start spewing dust while he's spewing dust, guess what? That dust comes to you and it clings on you. 
you need to get out of that conversation and shake off the dust. Say, this is not why I'm here. I'm here to bring the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I'm here to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead. And if my conversations are not producing it, it means it's producing dust. Shake off the dust. And the apostles, when they returned, told him of all they had done, and, took, and he took them and went aside privately into a desert, <laughs> a place belonging to the city of Bethsaida. Bethsaida. And the people, when they knew it, followed him, and he received them and spoke unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. And when the day began to wear away, hallelujah, we're going to go for another two hours, then you're going to experience what they are talking about there. When your tummy starts rumbling, you get hungry. <laughs> That's when the day starts wearing. It says, the day began to wear away, and they came the twelve and said unto him, Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the towns and country round about them, and lodge, get victuals, for we are here in a desert place. Woo! Hallelujah. We have power and authority over all things. Do you need all things when you have everything? But when you get into a desert place, that's when the power and all things comes into play. You see, the word says, I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings. Why do you need to exercise your spiritual blessings if we are in a house of blessings? So the blessings that you receive is not to practice in the house, but when you are out of the house, when you come into a desert place. See, every one of you <laughs> is called of God. And your ministry is not the same as mine. But you have a ministry. You'll find it out when you go out and the Spirit starts prompting you. It's like, maybe just smile to that person. I mean, just wave. When someone toots at you, Jesus loves you. <laughs> Verse 13. But he came unto them and he said, Give you them. So Jesus says, Give you them. Very important part today. Jesus gave, and then he said, now you give. Sometimes we don't know what has been given to us. And when it comes time to give, we look at the source, and the source is like, but I already gave you. <laughs> Just check your pockets. <laughs> it's there somewhere. He says, now you give them. And they said, we have no more but five loaves and two fishes, except we should go and buy meat for all these people. For they were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down. So there's another instruction. Then he says, well, they first said, we don't have. Hmm. They're thinking with their earthly minds. It's like... All right, I have to do the impossible, but I don't have the resources to do this impossible thing. They said, hmm, we don't have enough. And then he says, make them sit down in 50s in a company. And they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them, broke them, and gave it to his disciples. All right. So first, ha. Ah, then Jesus, let's put Jesus in red. He blessed. He broke. And he gave. My goodness, my goodness. All right. And then Jesus said, he made them. Make them sit down. Ha. Give and make to sit down. There is instructions being given from Jesus. Whew. Okay. So he blessed, he broke, and he gave. 
Hallelujah. I don't know if you're ready for what I'm about to tell you. Everything that we need is already supplied. So Jesus, first of all, he says, blessed. Hallelujah, we love this word. Man, you love it when I say Jesus blesses you. Man, I think you're following where I'm going with this. The next step is he broke. And then he gave. You see? The multiplication comes out of a breaking. Ah, Man, you're gonna you're gonna get this today. You're gonna get this today. Okay, so verse 56 it says, For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village and came to pass that as they went into the way, a certain man said unto the Lord, I will follow thee wherever you go. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds have the air, have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. But go you and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom. So no man, ah, putting his hand to the plow, ah, and look back, is fit for the kingdom. Sure. What does that mean? If Jesus says, follow me today, do you see him walking? (laughs) No man who when he puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom. Why? Because he desires mercy and not sacrifice. Now, Jesus gave the disciples in um, Luke 9, he gave them power, right? We've got that, over all things. Then he gives them a command. He says, you feed them, impossible. I mean, I just imagine Thomas there going to Judas because Judas was handling the finances, (laughs) helping himself as well a bit. It's like, hey man, (laughs) how much money do you have? (laughs) Jesus wants us to feed these guys. They're already trying to figure out what is about to happen here because we don't have enough. Then Jesus instructs them, make them to sit down. Give me what you have. He blessed it, he broke it, and gave it back to them. Now, oh, hallelujah. Let's go to John 6. It says, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles and they did eat and they did on them that were diseased. Sorry. And Jesus went up into the mountain and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. And when Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? (laughs) I am Philip. He was in for a thing. Because verse 6, he says, He said this to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Ah, Let's go back to the beginning. Jesus knows. He knows. He knows what he's going to do. Sometimes he just wants to find out if you know what he's going to do. Come. Come. So Philip answered him and said, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter, brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which has five belly loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus 
said unto them, Make the men sit down. First of all, you have to present to Jesus what you have. I want to ask you today, what is in your hand? What do you have? What is the gift that God has given to you? Sometimes that gift is not enough for what you need to achieve with it. Okay, not sometimes. All the time. (laughs) 99% of the time, you will not have enough for what you need to do. But Jesus knows what he is about to do. He wants to know, do you know what he is about to know? This is good. So he tells them to sit down. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he gave thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. There is another commandment. So he blesses, he breaks, and then he gives. And then it multiplies. And then after that, God is not wasteful. He tells them to gather that which remains. God is not a wasteful God. When he does something, he does it over and above what is needed. And that becomes your supply. So your need, (laughs) what you need to do, you first have to bring to God what you have. So that he can break you. Yes, God is going to break you. (laughs) And then he's going to multiply you. So that you will have more than enough when it is done. You see, the problem is we look at our, our needs and the things that we must do with what we have. And we say there is not enough. How are we going to buy 5,000 KFC loaves with 200 rand? Unless you know someone very high up in KFC, it's not going to (laughs) work. It is impossible. See, my day is getting weary. Getting hungry. Talking about these bread and fishes the whole time. (laughs) Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, For him that God has, the Father has sealed. Then he said unto him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And verse 29, are you there? So Jesus answered and said unto them, What is the question? What shall we do that we might work the works of God? What must we sacrifice in order to achieve the power, the glory, the miracles? And Jesus answered and said unto him, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. All right. So, Yamon said something great yesterday. I'm just going to repeat it. God does not want to be understood. He just wants to be believed. You cannot understand God. You can only believe God. Eric, how many times have you scratched your head trying to figure out how on earth am I going to do this? And then five months down the line, you look back and you still don't know how you did it. (laughs) God does not want to be understood. You cannot understand that in breaking multiplication happens. I'm not talking about one bread, you break it, you have two halves. No, I'm talking about one bread, you break it, you have 5,000 loaves. It's not logically possible. But in in our sense of life, we, we feel the pain of the breaking, but we don't understand it is for the multiplication. It is for getting rid of your ideas of how things should work. When the breaking happens, you must surely know the multiplication is on its way. Because that will in turn become your supply. 
You think the, the disciples left their 12 baskets right there when they fed them? No, 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 no. They take it with them. Because <laughs> they were going on a ship. See, what I'm telling you is the need became their supply. <laughs> you cannot understand that. You can only believe it. <laughs> this is the work of God. That you believe. Ha. Ah, only believe. Stop trying to understand. In our lives, if we don't, if we don't make sense of something, everybody around you suffers because of that. We, we try to figure things out. We, we use our reasoning to say, but this is the best. Man, if you didn't hear last night, I encourage you, please go listen to it. The world has its best. And then Saul came, another best. And they, but when God comes and he puts his best, it looks not like the world approves. In our lives, we can have our best. We can have our best ideas of how to run this church, how to run this school, how to run your life. You can have your best ideas, but it's not God's ideas. You cannot understand the way of God. You can only believe the way of God. But I'm going back to shaking off the dust. Because that is the problem that we have. Is the more dust we have, the less we are able to believe. Because dust will make you to put yourself in the position where you need to understand. You need to have logic in this thing. The more logic you have, the less of God you'll have. The more understanding you have, the less of God you'll have. Oh, faith, doesn't, faith doesn't work with two plus two is four. Faith works with two plus two is I have no idea what it is. But I know that he knows. That I know that he knows. That he is about to do something. He is about to break me and multiply me so that there will be a supply. You see, we are so afraid of the breaking, but let's just look at Jesus. He was broken. Ah, man, Isaiah talks about it. He was broken for our infirmities. What do you think that means? God broke him so that he can be multiplied, so that it would be a supply for all of us. In fact, I think when he took that fish and that bread, breaking it, I don't think that they understood that he was showing them that I'm going to be enough for you. I'm going to be there for you. There's going to be enough left over for you so that you can gather and give to more. Ah, Jesus, thank you. Only believe. Stop understanding. Ah, all right, from that time on, his disciples went back and walked, no, <laughs> and walked no more with him. And Jesus said unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that you are that Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? <laughs> And one of you is a devil. <laughs> My goodness. And sometimes when you allow people in your life and one is a devil, don't, don't feel bad. <laughs> it's there for a reason. Because without Judas, Jesus would not have been broken. So we look at people and things that causeth us to be brokeneth. And we ask God, why? Why did you allow these people into my life? And then later down the line, you will start realizing, but that is where you started thinking differently. That is where you started understanding differently. That is when you started looking differently. 
Because the moment someone deceives you or cheats you into something, your perspective on things changes. Yo, the King James is coming in it. I want you to BBG. That's your new, that's your new saying. Hashtag BBG. <laughs> First of all, you will be blessed. Second of all, you will be broken. And third of all, you will be given. And then you will be gathered. That's how God works. But when the breaking happens, we think the blessing has departed. You see, there's a process in everything. But we don't want to go through the process because it hurts. It hurts knowing that I don't have enough in order to pay escort. Because I'm sitting with all these things coming around me, yet I still have faith. But all of a sudden, the dust of the insecurities and the not enough starts to come to me. Because I'm just a human being. I'm not just a human being. But yes, I am a human being. Jesus came like us. Same passion, same desire, same temptations, but yet was without sin. That means he felt the same pain as we did, and now we have him as a high priest. So that means whatever I'm going through right now, he knows exactly what I'm feeling like. So whatever you're going through right now, I know exactly what you're feeling. Whatever I'm going through, some of you know what I'm feeling as well. Pain, hurt, betrayal, not enough. West Bank phoning you. It's like, ah, come take it. I don't like it anymore. (laughs) Get me a new one. (laughs) There's nothing different between me and you and between us and Jesus. The Jesus that stood and broke the bread is the same as you sitting here right now looking at me and saying, how? He understood the blessing turns into a breaking and the breaking turns into a multiplying. The multiplying will turn into giving. The giving will turn into your supply. Ah, man, that is, I think I should just stop there. Pour my oil.